What's going on traders? Corey Smith here with another weekly technical talk video. Um, today is Friday, March 1st, 2019. Close to another trading week, close to another trading month. A lot of volatility still going around the world, guys. A lot of things happening. Um, anybody new to these videos, I do these videos every week, every week recapping the Forex markets, S&P 500, oil, gold. Uh, I go over a little bit of breakdown of everything, mainly technical analysis. It's mainly me diving into the charts, showing you what I see, breaking down different pairs for you guys. The full-on technical analysis breakdown. Also go over a little bit of top performing and underperforming currencies last week to try to piggyback that momentum into the next week. And then I do a little bit of touch on the news and what's going on, uh, what to look out for. Um, all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much. As always, can't thank you enough for the love, the support. Always tune in these videos. I take time out of my Friday every week to bring you these videos. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy them. And again, everybody subscribe to the page, throw a like button, really means a lot. Throw a comment, tell me how you feel, what you like, what you don't like. If you want me to cover anything differently, let me know. But I'm um, going to go ahead and dive into the charts here. I'm going to do a full breakdown for you guys, going over everything. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So again, guys, it is the close to another month. Make sure you check your monthly candlestick closes. We're not going to go over that in this video. It's too much. Already going over the daily chart with everything, but make sure you do your own analysis, update your monthly charts, check to see the candle closes. You could have some key reversals, key levels respected, hit, broken, breaking closes, all kinds of stuff. So check your monthly candle closes. See you guys in the charts. Let's get to it. All right, guys. So starting with our performance for the week, as you can see, the British pound was the top performer, gaining 1.15% value. That is a nice, strong move. Euro, Swiss franc right behind it. Dollar was right in the middle of the pack this week. Then we had CAD, Yen, New Zealand, Aussie afterwards. As you guys already know, this is all pinned up against the US dollar. So that's why the US dollar always appears flat. But as you can see, it's right in the middle of the herd. So it was an average performer on the week. Pound standing out, CAD, Yen standing out. The rest, not too much of a change. Um, taking us over to the indexes this week, guys. Starting off with the dollar. Again, we're still in this sideways movement. Sideways movement's not good for trend traders, but this is what we've got. This is what we're dealing with. Uh, moving average crossover to the upside, but then price broke down back below the 50-day moving average. We thought we were going to get, um, you know, a respect of this trend line. I mean, of this um, moving average, higher low here, move higher, but price continued to sell off. We did find support down here in a strong level looking left. It is the 96 level. We have multiple rejection wicks off the zone here. As you guys can see, um, held pretty strong. Next pair we are looking at here is the euro. As you can see, we set a lower low, price pushed up, set a lower high, and we've pretty much just stalled out around this lower high. As you guys can see, we have back to back to back days of just sideways movement. We have a uh, bearish rejection ending the week here off this 50 day moving average, which has been holding us support. So the lower low, pull back lower high, Holding here, I'm expecting another lower low push move to the downside to come down to at least this 108 level down here, 108 to 10750 in this range. Yen continues to move lower. We had a higher light, higher low broken last week with a lower low. We were range bound all week. Then we had another push this week, breaking lower out of this range here to the downside. So our general bias to the downside now for the yen. We'll be looking to ride this downtrend lower. British pound continues to rip higher. As you can see, we're seeing a little bit of uh, you know pattern here with our strong push, strong sell-off, strong push. We have a light sell-off so far, um, but this could come back further before potentially another push higher. I do like this price action. We are retesting prior higher high, now turned potentially higher low. So I will be watching to see if this level holds to continue long from the pound, but Right now, that's what we're seeing in an uptrend now above all the moving averages, setting higher highs and higher lows, continuing up. CAD, sideways movement, a um, little bit of a wedge pattern forming here, right? We have two touches at the bottom, three touches at the bottom, two touches at the top. Price is closing in a bit. So we'll see if price continues that way. No clear direction. We're in a range at the bottom of the range. If you're a range bound trader, you can try to catch this long to the top. Um, if you're a breakout trader, you can try to catch a breakout here. Either way, we're range bound. So um, nothing really too special going on that we can break down there. Swiss franc in a downtrend, lower low, lower high, lower low, false breakout below this strong support, immediately reversed, pull back for a lower high, opened up higher like we were going to start to push up, 
ended up closing down lower, open up higher, ended up closing down lower. So we've just been range bound. Until this range gets broken, not really anything too too strong here, but I am more biased to the downside as we are in a downtrend. Price is still below the 50, 200 day moving averages. I'm still looking lower. Aussie, as you guys can see here, we're still in a range as well. Um, not too much we can say. Again, we're at the bottom of a range. If you trade ranges, you can try buying, rise to the top. If you trade breakouts, you can wait for this higher low that's been retesting on this red line here, all in this zone, to get broken and try to catch some shorts. All in all, not the best price action. We, we are just range bound. One thing that does stick out, right shoulder, head, I mean left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So a bit of a in, uh, head and shoulders pattern. We have left and right shoulders on resistance. We have the head not really on resistance, but close to the 200 day moving average. So we do have a bit of a pri uh, price action pattern here. We could wait to see this strong support breaking, whether it was the neckline of a head and shoulders pattern or just this support zone. I'd be watching it. So that's just additional confluence having that chart pattern there. New Zealand dollar, you guys can see we are still range bound as well. We have a lower trend line. If we drew it from here up to here that we're testing and an upper resistance holding. So we have an ascending triangle that is a bullish pattern, but this isn't at the top of an uptrend, which is typically where we use those. Right now, it's more of just a wedge pattern that we're looking for a breakout either side, whether it be the upside to the downside. We're looking for a breakout of this pair. But right now, bears have stepped into the market and moved it lower. So we'll wait and see what next week is going to bring us. Switching it over to our U.S. dollar majors, we call them here in Forex. So we are starting off here as always with the Euro dollar. As you guys can see, range bound. What a surprise. Um, we had a lower low push here. Pull back to set a lower high. And as you can see, I do like this um, price action we're getting on this lower high. So we had this bullish push higher, but then we had some bearish rejection. Nice strong gravestone doji upper pin bar rejection on the 50 day moving average on this upper trend line. Followed by a shooting star candle, another reversal pattern right behind it. Lower time frame, guys, check out this manipulation, right? Here you can see, it looks like a, a decent triple top pattern for me. Take it to the hourly. As you guys can see, we have this. We have a counter trend line. Price was trading below this strong resistance. Following this trend line, we had a nice strong break of this resistance. Long traders got in, nice long setup, boom, reversed, tanked, stopped everyone out long. Came down, traded here, boom, shot lower, broke out of support, trapped people short, whipped back up. Came back down, what did it do again here? Boom, pushed lower, trapped people into shorts, whipped back up, boom, shot higher, trapped people into longs, shot right back down. This is manipulation. This is wild price action. This is not what we want to see. This caught us a little bit here, thinking it was finally going to go down, and then it reversed on us. Uh, this pair has been been a bastard. Excuse my French, but um, yeah, that that's the euro dollar here. Um, looking for shorts, but sitting on the sidelines until there's strong confirmation. Pound dollar, um, as you guys can see, similar to the pound uh, currency that we just went over, FXB. We got strong push, hard sell off, strong push. We'll see if that push is going to exhaust if maybe this is our leg one of the Elliott wave this is our leg two we know leg three is the strongest most aggressive fastest moving this could just tap this and boom continue that leg higher um, it could sell off strong like it did in here so we're going to wait and see either way last week we called this um, continuing higher and it did so just like that hit the weekly resistance pulling back now so we'll have to wait and see Swiss franc, as you guys can see, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. We were waiting and hoping this would hold support here, and we'd catch a nice long break out of this bull flag channel pattern here. Take the lower time frames, you can see what I mean, this channel. But price moved lower, trapped everybody, moved back up, moved lower, trapped everybody, moved back up. Ugly price action, sitting on strong, 100 support, $1 parity. So we're we'll up to keep an eye on this pair as well to see what it does. Pound a dollar yen following a nice uptrend. Moved higher this week as we had called. Lower high, higher low, broken for a higher high. Consolidation pattern pushed out for another higher high. Now we just look to go long on exhaustions. Dollar CAD, this ugly inverted head and shoulders still playing out. We got a left shoulder, we got a head, we got a right shoulder. 
We've got a very strong neckline that price is respecting also on the 50-day moving average. We had a pretty strong bullish push today up to it. Um, CAD got crushed with oil and reports out of the Canadian dollar's uh, economy. So we're watching this strong resistance. I would love to see longs above here. I'd love to see a nice little push, pull back, catch it. Or if we get, you know, push above, fails to close above, comes down and closes a shooting star, doji, pin bar, something like that, then we can look to ride shorts. But I like this long setup more so than anything for the immediate future. New Zealand dollar, US dollar in this gray box still, guys. What I tell you, until it's out of this gray box, not looking for anything. So it double topped a little bit here off this weekly level. Sold off, hitting a trend line, hitting 50-day moving average. Might bounce. We're in this range until it comes out of it. I don't have any clear direction, guys. Aussie, same, similar story. We're coming up to a strong support zone here, but this support zone is pretty large. So another one in the gray box. Only difference we have here is another head and shoulders, right? So this could be our neckline if we take this ugly flash crash out of it. And we'll be looking for price below there. But then I'd like to see this weekly level down here break as well. So again, in a range till it's out. Nothing I can tell you. Pound Swiss franc, different story. We were in a downtrend. Had a rounding bottom cup and handle pattern here. Right? It's a bit large, but we have a cup. We have a handle. We have a long breakout. So what's that telling us? Trend is now reversed. We got a new higher high. Price broke above the 50. 20 and 50 are about to cross. Market structure is broken. New trend trading, higher high. What do we want to look for now? A higher low to catch the next higher high. So we are looking for longs on this pair. Nice break out of this trend line as well. Nice consolidation on this handle pattern of this cup and handle. That was our cue. Price broke higher. Euro dollar, euro yen, similar story. Um, was in a correction. We were looking for shorts off this resistance. Didn't happen. Kept going higher. Now hitting strong resistance. Now in an uptrend. 20 crossed above the 50. Price above the 50. New higher high. Trend changing. Now we want to look for a pullback. Oops. A pullback to cheaper pricing to catch that next push higher. Pound dollar, similar story. We called a long this week after this break. We wanted a little bit more of a pullback in here. We thought maybe we'd come back down here. But dipped a little bit and then boom. Price exploded higher. Now hitting strong resistance as you can see. So... Our next play, look for something like this and something like that. Look for a pullback to go long on pound yen. Euro pound, um, nice setups here. Lower low, lower high. We called this pin bar last week in my weekly newsletter that goes out, notifying people of my top trades of the week in your email. Check out my Instagram page, core.fx, if you're interested, link in the bio. Push lower, lower low, pull back, retesting lower high, prior lower low, support turn resistance. Looking for shorts now off this pair to the downside. Euro Aussie, range bound, broken closed up above this 1.600 resistance. We thought we could see a hold of this resistance and a potential short. The beginning of the week did not do that, broke above it, and we got a nice break and close. Now we can look for long opportunities for this pair. You don't really need that much of a pullback since it just broke and closed this Friday, but you could wait for a pullback if that's your style. Pound Swiss franc. Another beautiful trade, we called this long, thought it might have pulled back a little bit more. Another one, boom, exploded higher, hit resistance, broke out above resistance actually, pulled back now, we're looking for long opportunities off this zone in here. Pound New Zealand, broke above, pulling back, similar story. Right guys, don't wanna sound like a broken record, beat a dead horse here, but set higher highs, pulling back, that's where we wanna look to go long. Pound Aussie, hitting strong resistance, if you like resistance, um, supply zone plays, price is over exhausted, moving averages are down here, price is all the way up here. That means we need a mean reversion, that is a correction, and uh, you could be short in this. I would be setting my eyes on this golden area in here to go long. That's how I'd be playing this. If we take this to the bottom of our strong move from here up to there, we can see this golden zone's at 382, aggressive price action, trend following, long continuation pullback zone. So that's where our longs are going to be down there in that area on 382 fib. So that's what we'll be watching for. 
Uh, real quick, one last thing to cover S&P 500, U.S. equity stock market. Um, this uptrend is continuing to trickle. We have now hit major resistance, 2800 Price is hitting it hard. Um, we're going to need either strong candle break in that, strong momentum break, or we're going to see a correction. And what I would like to see is potentially this 200-day moving average act as support, get a little correction, bang, catch another pop higher. But we're keeping an eye out. There's a lot of volatility, a lot of that for economic stuff going on. Gold broke its trend finally. Wasn't a nice uptrend. I was telling you guys to buy breaks of these boxes. Uptrend, continuated consolidation, uptrend, consolidation, uptrend, and then boom, it tanked. Broke the trend line. Now we will be waiting to see these moving averages cross. Something like that. Price to pull back. Boom. We go short. Looking for now our downtrend to first con Firm. Price could do something like this and go back up. So we're going to wait for confirmation. Moving average crossing over. Support now turned resistance. Boom. And we look for shorts. Oil, I caught some nice trades on this week. Um, trended reverse in here, started to continue higher. We now have a double top pattern forming here. We have a bearish engulfing candle here. Not saying this is a trend reversal. That is not what I'm saying at all. We're hitting daily <laughs> resistance. What I'm saying is we might have a correction. This trend line we're watching, break of that could be a cue that we're going to head lower, potentially down to this weekly level. And then we'll wait and see. If it tests 50 SMA, continues higher, great. It's a pullback within an uptrend. If it comes down and breaks this as well, then we look for trend reversals, similar to what we see there in gold. All right, guys, this week we had a lot of news across the board. As you can see, strong retail data here. Um, Jerome Powell testified in front of the um, Senate, and as you guys can see here, this was a big news event, some whipsawing in the U.S. dollar, consumer confidence back up into the highs. This is strong for the U.S. economy. We had a pretty lackluster December and January, back into the highs. Aussie, New Zealand, some weak reports here, Can Can Canadian dollars, CPI, inflation data, missed expectations. Powell testified again, Aussie, New Zealand, I mean, uh, New Zealand dollars, confidence, business confidence, not very good. Australia had good private capital expenditure. Then we had GDP out of the U.S. beat expectations. Chinese PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, pick it up. Ooh, excuse me, guys, sorry. Picking up, that strength there led to a little bit of this risk on rally stuff we've been seeing. Weak GDP out of Canada, weak oil for Canada's correlation to their economy. Canadian dollar uh, fundamentally has been getting crushed. And then we had some weak PMI data out of the U.S. this morning. Next week, let's see what we got on the agenda. Starting with Sunday night, we have a little bit of Aussie news we could trade. Monday, we have Aussie news again. RBA rate statement, big major news. Aussie news again on Tuesday. GDP, this is a massive news for Aussie because we have retail sales again as well on Wednesday. So three straight days of Aussie news. Um... Then we have CAD's trade balance and Bank of Canada rate statement. Massive news for CAD on Wednesday. Thursday, we have um, some news out of the Eurozone refinancing rate and the <coughs> ECB press conference. Massive uh, news again at a central bank there, just like we have here. FOMC meeting, similar story with the ECB. China's trade balance, decent mover for a risk on risk off theme. Unemployment rate out of the US and Canada. Jobs, data, Friday. NFP, first Friday of the month, happens to be the second Friday of this month, when it's the first day of the month that jobs report skips to the next Friday. And then we have Powell speaking afterwards. So uh, massive week next week, right across the board. This is what we do or don't like to see, depending on your trading style. But we have a lot of fundamental drivers next week. So that does it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I appreciate you for tuning in again, as always. And I'll catch you next week. Love you all. Thank you. Have a great, blessed week.